Good morning, boys and girls, ladies, gentlemen, friends, enemies. <clears throat> I will apologise in advance if the sound is odd, because this is my first sound test of the microphone location in a new helmet. As the advert says, or the heading says, Tormax, Kberg Tormax ride review. Why? Well, I'm sure you're not being paid by anybody. But when I was reviewing and researching helmets, which I do quite fastidiously, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very picky person. The only helmet I couldn't find a ride review on was Kberg Tormax, or the Duke, which is... Let me explain, the Duke is the base helmet, the Tormax is when they stick a little peak on it. Why the little peak? Um, <laughs> I just fancied it. I've never had a helmet with a peak on, what the heck. Horror stories about if you go above 40, they put your head off and all that. Well, I have on a private road, ahem, been up to 90, and I didn't notice any reaction from the peak so you can write that one off or with this helmet you can um, it's very comfortable after my last helmet extremely comfortable there's an equal amount of wind noise of course being a modular helmet they all suffer wind noise this one's got an equal amount but then if I'm going any distance I got into the habit a long time ago of wearing earplugs, so I won't hear it anyway. The sun visor, very easy to operate, top of the head, pop it down, pop it up. If you want it just as a sunshade, it'll sit halfway. The front visor, just opens. A lot of the unboxing reviews will tell you this rubbish, but nobody on the internet has actually given a genuine what's it feel like ride test um, huh, manholes, potholes I can't say enough about it uh, the peak goes up very very efficiently I'm just not sure whether you'll hear me or not But now I'll keep it shut, and that way you've got a chance of hearing me. The flip front can be locked in the open position. Now, a lot of you know that modular helmets aren't legal to ride open. This one actually is. Um, it's got, I forget what the numbers are, PJ or HJ or something. It's been tested closed and open. So it's fully legal if you wish to do so to ride in the open position now I tend to not ride above 30 miles an hour with the helmet open um, then usually in the summer for the most obvious and basic I don't want to go down there today obvious and basic reasons not the most sensible thing in the world to do is it but if you want to you can um, I've actually tested it open up to 60 miles an hour now I haven't got much of a fairing doesn't really take any wind off my head um, very little and at 60 miles an hour it was starting to drag it just it got to the point where it's going to drag my head back 50 miles an hour not uncomfortable but a little bit of a chain on the chin strap a strain sorry on the chin strap This is why I like modular helmets. When you open them, they increase your peripheral vision no end. Far more than any other helmet. And that's why I like them. Stop at nasty little junctions like that. Just to show you, you can go up with them on.
So 50 is bearable. If it's a really stinking hot summer's day and you want it open. Huh, eeny meeny miny mo. I can't remember the last time I come down this road, so I really can't remember where the heck it goes. Um as I was saying, in the summer if you want it open, by all means, 50 miles an hour. That's not a try this one. Ah, uh, I know this road. I think I'm gonna try the other one. Yeah, 50 mile an hour, cruising speed. It would not be uncomfortable. The visor does give more um, peripheral vision and downward vision than my last helmet. My last helmet, I couldn't see the instruments without looking down. In this, there's a nice cutoff and I can see the instruments. I see the heavy frost last night, so the roads are still a bit icy, and these are untreated. Um, okay, just looking, see if I know this road. I do know it, but I don't remember the last time I. Oh, that slipped. That wheel just went under me a bit. There is still ice on the road. popular little road. What more can I say? I don't know. If you've got any questions, yeah, then please feel free to, to ask in the comments. I've covered the sun visor is very good. Better than the one in my previous helmet. That was always a bit thin and a bit um, difficult to see through. There was a bit of distortion. This one, let me just pop it down again. There's not actually a lot of distortion in it. I can see just as clearly through it. I don't want it down though. As I can through the visor itself. There's no distortion. Good peripheral vision, very comfortable. Uh, I can genuinely say virtually no draft around my neck. Now I don't have any form of headgear on, you know, like a balaclava. I don't have a neck tube. I've only got my jacket done right up to the neck, uh, which is touching the base of the chin strap, and there is virtually no wind coming through. I could ride this happily in the winter. I don't wear much under my jacket and trousers um, in the way of heavy clothing. I tend to use compression base layers. One good compression base layer, jacket, trousers, very comfortable. Weather like this, I put compression base layers and one very, very thin jumper on, and it's adequate. I mean, it's one degree today. Well, it was when I set out, it's probably crept up to about one and a half. But it's a lovely warm helmet. Now, is that going to give me a problem in the winter? That's a good question. I'm just trying to open the lid vent. There's a vent on the very top. I think ventilation is possibly its slightest downfall. I don't know. If it's very warm on a day like this, what on earth is it going to be like on a hot summer's day? Um, 
Closing that vent has caused a bit of mist, opening the vent, sorry, so it must have been open, I've closed it, so I'll move it back into the other position. But then, you have the option of just clicking the visor open one, which brings in adequate ventilation and cooling. just cracking the helmet open because it is legal to do so. Thank you. Uh, Saturday shoppers. I don't normally come out on a Saturday because they're all plonkers but right I'm gonna now go for a zap up the A12 at 70-80 miles an hour. I'm gonna see what tolerances I've got. I probably won't be able you won't hear me because I just stuffed the mic in. I'm not even sure if you're hearing me at the moment. That was interesting. Um, little naughty there. I went up to oh, poor dead bunny rabbit. Wow, I went up to speeds there I shouldn't have gone up to. Um, for the sake of legality, my speed never went above 70 miles an hour, officer. For the sake of testing, let me tell you. This is far better than my other helmet. I'm not going to mention the name of the other helmet because a lot of people like them. And I'm not about to run something else down. I can judge this as better than my other helmet. There's a little bit more wind noise on one side of the helmet than the other and I think I know what that is. Where I put the trying to find the hole. Yep, where I put the BT communication on, not sure you can see it, um, there's a hole in the side for their own system and I fed the wires through that hole so I need to get a little rubber grommet and just close it up and that will cure the difference in wind noise from left to right. Kberg, I'm not happy with their, their internal microphone BT system, 88 quid. This one I've had now for five years, cost me, I think it was £13 off the internet for a pair. And I put one in my helmet, one in Willows, and we've used them for years. I mean, we've done hundreds of miles talking to each other. Um, they have damn good battery life. So, 13 quid, why on earth? Would I go? Where was I? Oh yeah, why on earth would I go and pay 88 quid for something I don't know? So, Kberg, I think you've overpriced that. Um, I don't know if anybody from Kberg is watching. You tell me why it costs. That's a nice little road. 88 quid private road? No signs. I don't know, I can see a freeway sign ahead. Um, yeah, somebody from Kberg get back to me, why you charge £88 for a BT system that you can stick on the side of your helmet. But 
20 quid and it works and it's efficient oh here we are the Sunday bunch out for a shoot some pheasants about to die I can't really object I love a bit of pheasant I would say no, no to a nice brace Morning. But I doubt anybody's going to give me a brace, so I'll carry on on my way. It's just attractive. I don't particularly like cyclists, but yeah, okay. Sit, don't you slow down. Mmm! <laughs> it's a GoPro. What? It's a GoPro. Is it what? A... GoPro. What's that mean? That's the name of the camera. Oh, right. Um, just records I'm riding. Okay. And I've got a channel on YouTube and I do video logs on different okay, things. Well. Yeah, it's great fun. I was just admiring your birds there, but oh, well, there you go. I can't shoot them, unfortunately. No. And you got spec savers quite a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoy! <laughs> as well. That would be nice. It didn't bloody offer any despite me saying it twice. I think he was deaf to the idea. Nice grouse they were. <laughs> but there you go. I'll go back and have my cheese on toast. I had my first few months of riding bikes without a helmet legally. Then I've spent a lot of time with just ordinary bone domes and open face. Uh, of course, when you're in your eight, sort of 17, 18, you're invincible, you don't care. 50? Yeah. I'll ride country roads like this on a summer's day if there's not a lot of traffic about at 45 with the helmet open. But as I get older, I get wiser. And I like the protection of the helmet closed. That's it, questions. You want to ask me something about it? You can find no end of unboxing videos, you can find no end of people discussing it who haven't used it. And I think, unless you want to prove me wrong, this is the first using the helmet on a ride. What's it like? <laughs> I'm sold, I love it. I am absolutely sold. Bye for now. As usual, ride safely, look after yourself. Unlike me. And if you've got any questions about the helmet, or about my sex life, give me a call. Bye.